All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. It's Morgan here at JotForm, and welcome to today's webinar about our new QuickBooks integration. Uh, this webinar is going to be pretty short, about 15 minutes like our snack break webinars typically are, and it'll mostly be a demo. Um, but we are recording today, so if you need to rewatch at uh, a later date, I will share some information at the end about how to access that recording. So chances are that if you're here, you're somewhat familiar with QuickBooks. Maybe you even use it for your accounting software currently. Um, but you may be curious what this integration does and how it can be valuable to your workflows. So you can use this integration in two key ways. The first is to use data from JotForm to send it directly to QuickBooks to create a customer in QuickBooks. Uh, and the second is to create an invoice in QuickBooks using JotForm data. You can also do both of these things at once, which I'll be sure to point out in our demo. This is a native integration, which means that it replaces a Zapier workflow that I know some people were using previously. Um, I know this came up in registration questions a couple of times. So this does replace that Zapier workflow. Um, my understanding is that that was a premium Zapier workflow and cost money. So this is built into JotForm. It is part of your license, so there's no extra fee there. Uh, this workflow also replaces the need for you to manually gather data from JotForm and then transfer it into QuickBooks. So overall, the result is faster, easier, smoother workflows uh, for a wide range of JotForm users. In fact, it was our own finance department that made this request initially. They were looking for a way to simplify invoicing that they were generating in QuickBooks using JotForm data. So whether you're a retailer, bookkeeper, field service provider, or anyone in between, you can use this integration to immediately create new customer records every time somebody makes a purchase, fills out a contact form, or sends a service request. And when it comes time to build those customers, you can also use this integration to create and send invoices. And on that note, let us go out into our demo. Let me close out the slides and hop over to our demo. Um, I do want to start in QuickBooks very briefly just to talk about two things. So first, I wanted to show you where the data goes when you send it to QuickBooks from JotForm. Uh, in Get Paid and Pay, you'll find your new contacts under Customers. And you'll find your invoices under invoices. So pretty straightforward. All of the customers in invoices that you see here currently are ones that I've added using this integration. So you can see exactly how it's working. The other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, you will, if you want to use the invoice piece of this integration, you will need to make sure that you have your products and your services set up in QuickBooks before you use the integration. Uh, so you will need to match those exactly to your whatever you're creating in JotForm to create orders. Uh, again, I'm assuming uh, you know, if you're here, you're watching this because uh, you are a QuickBooks user already. So <clears throat> it's possible that you already have your products and services listed in QuickBooks. If you don't, you do want to take a couple of minutes to go ahead and set all that up first. And then again, when you're setting up your form in JotForm, you want to make sure that you're matching the words exactly. So here we can see cake, cookies, and ice cream. And when I get to the order form demo, I will point out that you can see those written exactly the same way. All right, so moving over to JotForm. Uh, first example here is a service request form where people can make a maintenance request or, or something along those lines. Pretty straightforward, just name, company, email, phones, contact information. And then they're describing the issue at the bottom and rating the severity of it so we can sort of prioritize service requests. The goal here is that whenever somebody fills out this form for a service request, they automatically get added to QuickBooks as, as a contact for us. So we have them there for invoicing down the line, for record keeping, for um, you know mailing lists, whatever it is that we need that information for. To add the integration, I'm going to move from the Build tab here to the Settings tab and look for integrations on the left. Here is where you'll find all of the JotForm integrations, and you can see currently that QuickBooks is right here at the top because it's brand new. If at any point in the future you're looking for it and it's not right there, you can always just start searching for it, enter QuickBooks into the box here, and you'll see it pop up right there. All right, so I'm clicking on QuickBooks. The first thing we'll need to do after we click on that tile to say that we want to do the QuickBooks integration is to choose the action. So again, you have two options here. Uh, in this case, I'm going to create a customer. I'll do. I'll select that and hit next. 
And then the next thing I need to do is make sure that I'm sending this job form data to the correct QuickBooks account. Now I've logged into my account pretty recently. I've already authenticated JotForm and QuickBooks. So all I need to do is select the correct account, which you see here and hit add action to move forward. But if this is your first time, you will have to authenticate first, make sure that JotForm and QuickBooks can talk to each other. Uh, and there will be a few additional steps there, but there are pretty clear instructions on how to do that. So I'm going to hit add action. <clears throat> And then the last thing that I need to do here is to choose which fields should map to which fields. So I'm going to take the fields in QuickBooks and I'm going to select the fields in my form that should directly go to those fields in QuickBooks. So first here we see customer display name is the QuickBooks field. That is going to be name in job form. Uh, I can add additional fields for phone number and email. So I have email and phone here. So I can go ahead and add email and phone number coming from my form. Um, let's say I want to add the company name as well. And that is going to map to company in my form. And let's say the last thing I want to add here is a notes section. Uh, so in my QuickBook notes, I want to add the information where they're describing the issue that they have. If there are additional fields you want to pull over, you can do that in the same way. So you're just going to hit add fields. And then again, choose the field name from QuickBooks and choose which form uh, fields from your form should map to that. Hit save and you're all set, all ready to go. Um, so now you can see I have a create customer action added here. When I hover over it, there is a uh, pencil icon to edit it, which you can see brings me back to the previous page. Uh, so I can make any changes I need there. There's also a vertical ellipsis here where I can rename, disable, or delete an action. Uh, disabling an action means that the action will still exist, but it's not active, so you can reactivate it at some point down the line. This is all ready to go, so I'm going to go into Publish. Publish is where you have multiple options of how to share your form, and I'm going to open this up in a new tab so we can fill this out as if this is somebody who does have a service request. So this will be easy issue. Uh, from 678, uh, her email is izzy at test, and number is five, five, lots of fives for her phone number there. I'm going to skip address, but uh, let's go to describe the issue. Please help with our toilets. And this is a very urgent, a very extreme issue. So Izzy submits her form here. She gets a thank you screen letting her know that it's been sent. She should also get an email confirmation that this went through. And then I, as the account owner, would get an email confirmation that this went through. And I can go into my QuickBooks account now. And if I go up to customers, we should see Izzy appear in my customer list. So there we go. We have Izzy issue here, her company name, phone and email pulled over. And if I want to see more about Izzy, all of the customer details, or want to add anything here, I can just click on her name to pull that up. And in the notes section here, we can see that request that she submitted on the form itself, the, the description of the issue. All right. So let's look at the other piece of the integration, creating an invoice. Uh, for that, I have an order form. And if you remember from my QuickBooks uh, example there, what I showed you in QuickBooks initially, I had cake, cookies, and ice cream. You can see all three of those appear written exactly the same way in my form. So this is a pretty straightforward bakery order form. Name, select the product. Um, they can also select a product quantity here as well. Uh, and then credit card information and email. Uh, this is added using a payment integration. So you can see when I click on that, I can make any changes there with the payment settings here. Um, so you a number of different payment integration options with JotForm that you'll find under payments here. So once again, I'm going to go into settings and integrations and QuickBooks. And this time I'm going to click to create an invoice and hit next, choose the account. And we'll see something similar to what we just saw in the last example. In this case, I'm going to focus on the gray section here. And this is where I'm going to pull in uh, the, again, map over the fields from the form that should go to fields in QuickBooks. So here for QuickBooks, we have the item name, quantity, and price. On my order form, that is going to map to my product's name, my product's quantity, and my product's price, respectively. If there are additional line items I want to add, I can do that as well. And if you want to add tax, that is an invoice field um, that you can turn on with the toggle here at the bottom. 
So you can see QuickBooks tax and you would map that in the same way to whatever the appropriate form field is. Um, I don't have tax here, so I'm just gonna turn that off. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the session that you can do both of those actions at the same time. And this is one excellent way to do that. Um, so here at the top, you see something that looks identical to what we looked at in the last example, where we have the customer display name and we can map over fields in the same way we did it in the other example. So in this way, when I save this integration, everything is saved at once. And that means that an invoice will be created and a customer will be created at the same time. So here I'm going to pull in customer display name as the name and I'll pull in email so I'm selecting the field from QuickBooks and selecting the field from Chopform. And uh, all I need to do from here is save. Again, um, we can edit this, remove it, uh, whatever we need to do from the vertical ellipses there. You can see that there is an option to add a new action and that brings you back to the beginning. So if I didn't wanna create a customer with the invoice for whatever reason or forgot to, or what you know whatever the case may be, and wanted to create a customer in the same way I did it in the first example, I could add an additional action here where I'm also creating the customer. Um, so two different ways to get at the same uh, end result there, but I'm gonna leave that alone for now. And once again, this is ready to go. So let's go into publish and we'll open this up and we will make an order. So this will be for Carly Cakes and Carly is gonna order a number of cakes and she's just got eight cakes today. Um, you'll see the prices listed as free. So that's just something I do in demos. So I don't accidentally charge myself any money in the process of doing demos. But presumably in your case, you do actually have a cost here that will get carried over to QuickBooks as well. Um, this is Carly's company card. So she's going to go ahead and enter her card information and her numbers here and got all that set. Uh, and then her email address at the bottom. All right, so Carly will submit. Carly will see the thank you page and get her confirmation email. I, again, as the account owner, will also get a notification email. And uh, now I can go into QuickBooks and go into invoices and we should see Carly right here. So she's our last item here at the bottom, chronological order. Um, if I wanted to view information about that or the status, I can just click on her, her name there. Uh, if I need to make any edits to the invoice, I can do that by hitting edit. So we'll see everything that comes over from JotForm. We have the date, um, we have the products that she selected, the quantity that she has selected at the rate, and then the full amount, which again, in this case is all zero. Um, we have my business information up at the top, so we can make any changes needed, but all of that information has come over from JotForm. Uh, also, if it was time to print this out or you wanted to uh, keep a copy of this or send this off or whatever, here is what this looks like when you download it. So you can see, again, your contact information at the top, uh, the billing information, and then the line item with the quantity and the full cost all included there. Also, if I go up to customers, since I did both of those actions in the same place, we do see Carly added here as well. So just like with the other uh, examples that I've added here, Carly appears here with her email pulled in and you know any other information I wanted to pull in. In this case, I just did email. All right, so that is everything that I wanted to share about this integration. Again, keeping things pretty quick with these snack break sessions. I did wanna leave you with a couple of resources. Um, I know we have some questions. So unfortunately, we don't have time for Q&A in our snack break webinars because we're trying to keep things short, but I have a few resources and we'll leave you with some contact information as well. Excuse me. Um, first, I have a couple of blogs here. So introducing JobForm's new QuickBooks integration by my colleague Luke is a very thorough explanation of how to set this all up with screenshots included. Uh, Luke also includes a couple of different use cases in here, so you can view those for reference, really helpful. Um, my colleague Lainey has a similar blog, but with a more enterprise focus. So if you are a job from enterprise user, this one might be more appropriate for you. The last link here is just an overview of the integration details. We have this available for all of our integrations. So you can scroll through some of the images here and see what it looks like to set it up and get an overview of what you can do with the integration. This might be useful as a reminder for you or if you're trying to get a colleague on board or whatever the case may be, but just a, a good reference to have. 
Uh, and as far as contacts, our support team is a great resource, jobform.com slash contact. They can help with all of your technical questions as you're setting this up, or if you have any, um, if things aren't working the way you expected, they are there for you 24 seven and an excellent resource. Uh, you can also reach out to me as well. I'm Morgan at Jotform. I would love to hear your questions or comments or your use cases, especially. I always love to hear use cases. Um, if I can't personally answer your question, I will direct you to somebody on our team who can as soon as possible. Uh, last thing I wanted to point out, the recording. Uh, if you are looking to watch this again or share it, you will see it on our YouTube channel within the next 24 hours. You can just search Jotform YouTube and you'll find us. You'll see this webinar, all of our other webinars, and tons of other videos from us, including short tutorials that are in the four to five minute range about a number of integrations and other Jotform pieces. Uh, also, you can view all previous webinars and register for upcoming webinars at jotform.com slash webinars. So that's a great resource for you as well. You can see what we have coming up next there and register right on that page. Um, so on that note, I'm going to close this out. Uh, again, recommend you check out those resources. And again, if you are interested in future webinars, we have some every couple of weeks, every two to three weeks, we have a webinar. Um, check out that webinars page to learn more and sign up for the next one. And hopefully I will see you next time. Bye.